All right, good evening, Zainab. Please confirm if I'm audible to you or not. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so both of you, Labiba and Zainab, we were talking about the accounting equation in the previous session. Uh, we understood the meaning of the accounting equation, wherein I've told you that accounting equation is a mathematical expression that shows the asset and liability of a firm are equal. And the purpose of accounting equation is uh, basically accounting equation helps us to identify the effect of any business transaction upon the asset and liability. That is what I've told you in the previous session as well. <clears throat> then we also understood that accounting equation basically indicate the total claim uh, uh, of the firm are equal to the total asset. Right. And in order to uh, put it into the uh, form uh, uh, as an as a mathematical equation. We can write it as total asset equals to total claim, which is asset equals to liability plus capital. And liability can be further. Uh, in order to find out the liability, we can write it as asset minus capital. And to de determine the value of the capital, we will be we we can simply subtract the value of the liability out of the asset. <clears throat> so all of these things we have covered in the previous class and. Uh, other than this, other than the meaning of the accounting equation and the equation itself, we also sorry, we also understood that every business transaction have two effects. Every business transaction have two aspect, the debit and the credit aspect. And for the time being, just avoid the term debit and credit. So just for the time being, keep that in mind that every transaction is uh, going to affect two areas of business to aspect of the business that is what we call dual aspect concept we will learn about the debit and credit later in the in our syllabus but for the timing just keep that in mind that any business transaction will at least affect to two aspect of the business uh, it could be asset and liability it could be both the both the aspect could be asset both the aspect could be liability <sighs> then we understood uh, the effect of business transaction how it affect two aspect of the business by taking uh, many various examples. Uh, I, I hope everything that we discussed in the previous session with you is clear to both of you. If it is, then we will move to the next part. In today's session, we will be uh, we will be doing the question based on the accounting question. But if you have any doubt, then please tell me so that we can uh, clear that those doubt and uh, then move to the next topic. Sir, it's clear, but it's a little bit hard. It's like the more I revise, I will get through it. But if you ask me at the spot, I my mind just gets mixed up with all of all the things. Oh, okay. So you are finding it difficult. No, it's mm. not. It's okay. It's not that difficult. Like I know I have to give more time and revise it every yeah, day. Yeah, obviously you will have to. You will have to go through the concept again and again. And yeah. after revising yeah, these uh, those those topic, you will be you'll find that these this is one of the easiest topic of our syllabus. I say, and therefore we are starting from this this chapter now. Since it is easy, therefore I've decided to start with the accounting question only. Anyways, uh, Zena, do you do you have any doubt? You want to ask ask anything? No, sir. Everything is clear. Everything is clear. Okay. All right then. So we will start with this question. Uh, and Zana, we will be. This is our uh, first question based on accounting equation. Question number one. Just a minute. 
So this is our question number one. Okay. So question is asking us to prepare the accounting equation from the following information. There are three information given in the question. First is started business with cash 41,000. Opened a bank account with a deposit of 4,500. Bought goods from Messrs and Sun and Company for rupees 11,200. He'll be dealing with, uh, with these items one by one. But first of all, let me show you the format of the accounting. How do we actually solve question based on the accounting equation? See, whenever you, we want to uh, solve questions based on accounting equation, we, we need to prepare a particular format. All right. So unless and until you prepare the format, you won't be able to solve the question based on accounting equation. So format is very, very important in this chapter. So let me show you that. How do we actually prepare the format of the accounting equation? <clears throat> solution to question number one. Okay. First of all, we write down the serial number of the transaction. Then the type of transaction. Transaction being carried out. And then uh, we make a column for the asset. All right. <clears throat> so this is the format of the, this is the format that we use to, that we use to solve question based on the accounting equation. So here, oh, just a minute. All right. So I want both of you to prepare this format and then we will start with the solution or or just wait for one minute let me solve this question for you and then you will be allowed to write note this down all right i'll give you some extra minute to note this down but let me just explain this question let me just solve this question for you <clears throat> see uh a minute So this is the question. Question is saying that we started business with a cash of rupees 45,000. All right. So first of all, so just, just tell me whenever a person is starting a business with, a, with cash of rupees 45,000, starting business, how it is going to affect the, affect the business? Which, which two aspects of the business will get affected? The starting business with cash. Tell me. Whenever a person is starting business with cash, which two aspect of the business is going to get affected? Let me tell you. First of all, when a person is starting a business with a cash of rupees 45,000, the cash in the business will increase. Yes or no? Cash will increase by 45,000. Is that correct? Yes or no? Yes. Both of you? When a person is starting a business with a cash of rupees 45,000, so it is definitely going to increase the amount of cash in the business, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. And 
then at the same time since the person who is starting the business if he is investing 45000 it will increase the amount of cash available in the business as well as the the his capital will also increases by 45000 na so cap, capital will also increase capital will also increase by 45000 is that correct yes the amount that a person invests is the capital yes, so basically cash is increasing in the business but at the same time there is a liability also increasing upon the business insiders internal liability is increasing towards the owner of the business so basically when a person is start uh, when person starts a business with a cash it is going to affect two aspect of the business one is the cash and then the next is the uh, okay. capital yes so <clears throat> so I'll write down started business with cash started business with cash it is it will increase the amount of cash available in the business so let me write here cash is the asset now so cash is going to increase so cash will increase by 45000 and at the same time capital will also increase now capital will increase by 45000 so i'll write down the 45000 just below the amount uh, just below the capital 45 thousand is that clear yes or no yes sir yes sir okay now now we we just need to total the value after the first transaction now you will notice that the asset side should be equal to the liability plus capital so since there is only one transaction just recorded when you will total the total both the side the asset and the liability side you will find that the both the sides have equal value 45000 on the asset side as well as on the liability plus capital side is also equal to 45000 i hope this point is clear yes sir yes sir okay now moving on to the second item second transaction second transaction was opening a bank account with a Uh, with a deposit of rupees forty five hundred, right? Open open a bank account with a deposit of rupees forty five. So, what is happening here is that we are start we are opening a business is opening a bank account. So when a bank account is opened, just a minute, open bank account. So when bank account will be opened, what what will happen? Bank Balance will increase. There is one more asset come into existence. That is bank. Bank will increase by how much? Bank will bank balance will increase by forty five hundred. Is that correct? Bank balance will increase by forty five hundred. Is that clear? Yes, sir. But at the same time, there will be reduction in the amount of cash available. So we will subtract the amount of cash available. Forty five hundred will be subtracted out of cash, and. Forty-five hundred will be written be below the bank. Is that clear? Yes. There will yes. be no change on the liability and capital side. Nothing. It everything will remain same. So when you will total both the sides, now you will get. See, still you should get the same value. The the, the total of both the sides should be equal. So forty-five thousand minus forty-five hundred, you will get forty thousand five hundred. Plus the bank balance forty five hundred, right? On the liability side, we have zero liability, but forty five thousand will be will still be there by way of capital. All right, so forty five hundred. This side is equal to this side. Yes or no? Forty thousand five hundred plus forty five hundred. You will get forty five thousand. And again, you will notice that the asset and liability, both the sides are equal. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now, final transaction. <clears throat> All right. So, final transaction. Third. So, 
in the final transaction it is written that bought goods from messrs and son and uh, messrs and son and company for 11200 now see this is very important see whenever it is written that bought goods from and the name of the party is written whenever it is written that from whom the goods have been purchased then it is always presumed that good must have been purchased on credit if the name of the supplier is written always presume that good must have been brought on credit got it see if if the goods is purchased on cash the cash should be written in the question if it it it, it uh, it's written uh, in the format like bought goods from uh, got uh, bought goods for rupees 11200 we, we would have simply presumed that good must have been bought on cash but this time question is mentioning the name of the supplier from whom we are purchasing the name of the supplier is all, uh, is given in the question so whenever the name of the seller is given we would we would simply presume that good must have been purchased on credit is that clear whenever yes, the name yes. of the seller is given whenever name of the seller is given in the question we will simply presume that goods must have been purchased on credit what will happen or due to, the, to this transaction what to what two aspect of the business will get affected due to this transaction see first of all when you buy good the good the amount of good available in the business will increase yes or no goods will increase yes or no that means uh, you can also consider goods as stock the stock the value of the stock will increase yes or no yes sir but at the same time because you are buying the goods on credit so what will happen your your liability will also increase liability by way of creditors creditor is what creditor is the person who is selling you good, selling from whom you are buying goods on credit so your liability will increase by way of creditors is that clear yes sir both of you labi bhai is this is that is that clear to you as well Labiba, please confirm now whether it is clear or not. Labiba, are you still there? Labiba is not there. All right. Anyways, so Zainab, is this clear to you? Yes. Sir. Okay. So uh, when we we will be putting this into the format, how are we going to write? See, we will be writing it this. Way. Write down. Bought goods on credit. Bought goods on credit. So, when you will buy goods on credit, what will happen? The first, so first of all, the stock of goods will increase. So, stock is what goods are what goods is goods are asset, na. So, stock is increase asset is increasing. So, we'll we'll write down the name of such asset which is increasing. The stock is increasing. So, we will uh, add another stock under the heading of the asset. And we are buying goods of rupees. The value of the goods was eleven thousand two hundred. Is that right? Eleven thousand two hundred. That means the value of the goods or the value of the stock will increase by eleven thousand two hundred. Is that clear? Tell yes, me if sir. it is clear or not. But at the same time, since we are buying the goods from the Messrs. Uh, uh, what was the name? Sorry, Messrs. Son and Company. So the name of the seller is mentioned in the question. So we will. Simply presume that the goods must have been bought on credit, so the value of the credit, uh, sorry, the one of the liability will increase by the name of creditor. Under the liability, we we will have to mention the name of the liability that is creditor. So creditor will increase by eleven thousand two hundred. Eleven thousand two hundred. Is that clear? Tell me if it is clear or not. Okay, now we will finally. find out the final equation so that will be we will have at the end of all the transaction we will have the cash available in the business at 40500 then we will have a bank balance of 4500 then a stock of 11200 so this is the value of the asset and on the other hand we will have the value of the liability plus capital liability by way of creditor stands at 11200 and the capital stands at 45000 
got it is this clear zainab yes sir okay now what we will do we be just to ensure that whether we have done the question correctly or not we will put this into the equation format so the account the format of the accounting equation the formula of the accounting equation is accounting equation equals to what is the accounting equation accounting equation is equal to number 1 asset total asset right total asset should be equal to total claims that is liabilities plus the capital is that correct so the value of the asset we have got is 45000 sorry 40500 plus 4500 plus 11200 and on the other side liability is by way of creditors we have 11200 and capital stands at 45000 totaling it we will get uh, 56 uh, just one yeah 56200 on the left uh, right hand side of the equation 56000 200 and on the left hand side of the equation we will, we should get the same value 56200 so hence it is proved that both the assets and the liability side is equal tell me zainab is this clear to you lavi bhai yes, that clear to you as well no sir i cannot understand the third part from the the like the third point right i think i was disconnected in between i was not able to understand the whole thing so were you able to understand the previous uh, two transaction yeah i understood that point but the third okay. one and All right. no, the third one, no problem see see what what after after the second transaction what we have done we just uh, prepared the uh, we just found out the value of the asset and the liability see the second transaction basically said that the uh, business have opened a bank account so by uh, uh, because of the opening of the bank account there was a reduction in the value of the cash available by 4500 but at the same time the bank balance will increase by 4500 got it is that clear yeah. and then we will find out the total value of the asset and liability side so totaling it we will get 40500 on the asset side since the 45 the amount available Uh, by way of cash was earlier forty five thousand, but we have opened a bank account by withdrawing forty five hundred out of it. So the cash available in the business right now is only forty five forty thousand five hundred. At the same time, we have another asset by way of bank, which stands at forty five hundred. After the second transaction, and on the other hand, the capital, uh, the liability plus capital side remain unaffected. Now moving on to the third transaction. In the third transaction, I told, I, I explained that. when we we have bought goods on credit see in the question it is written let me show you it was written that bought goods from messrs and son and company for 11200 so that is what i was saying that whenever a whenever the name of the seller is given in the question whenever it is written that from whom we are buying the goods we will simply presume that we must have bought the goods on credit this is the presumption whenever the name of the seller is given like in this question bought goods from messrs and son and company is given so that means the name of the seller is given so whenever the name of the seller is given we should simply presume that goods must have been bought on credit all right so if we are buying goods on credit how it is going to affect the overall equation of the business firstly since we are buying goods so the value of the goods in the form will will increase the value of the goods in the business will increase so basically when you buy goods the stock of goods will increase right is that clear to you stock of goods will increase by 11200 is that clear yes or no yes sir but at the same time because you are buying goods from the messrs son and company and we have presumed that you must have bought the goods on credit so that means there will be increase in the liability as well you will have to pay back 11200 to messrs and son and company so liability will increase and the person from whom you buy you are buying goods on credit is known as creditor so liability will increase in the form of creditor when you will buy goods the stock will increase by 11200 at the same time creditor will also increase by 11200 
is that clear to you yes sir so that is what we have done in the accounting equation format what we have done we just wrote uh, it like this uh, like this that bought goods from uh, on credit all right so when you will buy good on credit the value of the stock will come under uh, a new asset will form that by way of stock and you will have to write down the value of the stock that you have purchased under the under the uh, stock all right so 11200 is the value of the stock that we have purchased so in the on the asset side there is a increase in the value of the stock but on the liability side we have there will be increase in the value of the creditor creditor will also increase by 11200 got it yes okay now finalizing the accounting equation when you will finalize it the final equation will look like 40500 will be available by way of cash 4500 will be available by way of bank balance and stock of 11200 will be there on the asset side and looking on looking at the uh, right side of the equation we will have a creditor standing at 11200 and then a capital balance of 45000 got it yes is that okay now just to ensure whether we whether everything is done is correct or not what i have done i just made an accounting equation and to check the correctness of the solution what uh, we i just applied the formula that is total asset equal to the liability plus capital and putting all the values here 45000 was the bank uh, the the uh, cash balance available bank balance 4500 and the value of the stock is standing at 11200 should be equal to liability plus capital is that right so the value of the liability yeah. is standing at 11200 by way of creditor and 45000 by way of capital so when you will you will add 11200 Plus forty five thousand, you should get fifty six thousand two hundred. And on the other hand, on the right, the left hand side of the equation, the value of the total asset should also be equal to fifty six thousand two hundred. If both the side equalizes, if both the, if both the sides have same values, it means that you have done the question correctly. If the answer is if if the if the values differ, if both the sides are not equal, that means we must have committed some mistake somewhere while solving the question. I hope it is clear to you. Okay, sir, but uh, it it is like uh, we got different answers, so we have to do the whole thing again until we get the correct answer, like the similar answer. Yeah, see, if if you are uh, getting the different values, both the sides having different value, that means you must have committed some mistake while solving the question. You so you just need to find the mistake and you need to correct the equation. Only then you will be able to uh, equalize both the sides of the equation. Okay, Got sir. it. You don't have to do the entire question again. The the thing is that you just have to find out. It is basically if the difference is arising, that basically means that there is some mistake. There is somewhere in the question the solution you have made a mistake, so you just have to spot that mistake and then accordingly correct the correct the in uh, the uh, whatever the mistake you have committed. Hope it is clear to you. Yes, sir. It's clear now. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, both of you, I want you to note this down now. If and if you are still doubtful about anything, do let me. Please note note this down. Can you show us the previous question before, before this one? You want me to show the question as well? Yeah, I want to write the question and then I will try doing it from myself. Don't don't write down write down the entire question because it is going to take a lot of time. Just take this screen screenshot for now. Or if okay. you if you want, I will share the uh, PowerPoint with you. It would be better. If you want me to share the PowerPoint with you, I can share the PowerPoint as well. You don't have to write down no, the entire sir, question. Just either for the time being, just take the screenshot. All right? Yeah, I took the screenshot. Thank you. Let me know. Let me know whenever you want me to switch to the solution. So you can switch to the the other one. Do you want to write down the solution, no? Yes. Do it. Let's do it quickly.
Sir, can you scroll down a little bit? Then say. Then both of you, Labiba. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a small doubt. Sorry. Uh, could you sir, please I repeat? I was just wondering if we if the numbers uh, in over there, but where you were writing uh, in Roman numbers like one two three we can also write an actual form or we have to use only this form oh, sorry I'm, I'm not getting the question you are asking about the serial number i'm writing yeah you can uh what, what do you want to use you can use alphabet that yeah. is what yeah like because over here yeah, yeah, that, no, no, that is perfectly fine if you want to use the alphabet that will be also okay 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 uh, since, see, since in the question uh the transaction was given in the in this format one two three so i've used the same format in the serial number otherwise you can also write down a and a b and c moving on to the next question i hope this is clear uh, starting with the second question so showing the accounting show the accounting question for the following transaction all right, so I want both of you to try this question first and then I'll solve it for you. Question is easy. The first transaction is Gopina started business with cash 25,000. 25, Purchase good, good, goods from Shyam 10,000. Goods sold to Sohan costing 1,800 at 1,500. Uh, 1, Gopinath withdrew from business 5,000. All right, try to solve it. I'll be, otherwise, I'll be solving it. If you are not able to solve it, I'll be give, showing you the solution. Am I clear? Both so of you? We, yeah, we have to do this one now and then we will tell you the answer. Yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, uh, solve this question now. I'm waiting for your answer. I'm giving okay. you five, seven minutes to solve this question. Take your time. Let me know the answer.
done both of you labiba zanab no sir just two minutes sir all right then Zainab, are you done? Yes, sir. I'm here. sorry, I'm not able to hear you properly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I got uh, 39,700. 39,500 is, I guess, this is not the right answer. Uh, just a minute. 29,700 would be the correct answer. Yeah, I got this answer. You got the same, 29,700? 39,700. 39,700. So somehow, I guess you are adding 10,000 somewhere. Sir, I got the 29,000. <clears throat> you got 29,000. Okay. All right, let yes. me show you the solution. How it will be done. See, first of all, <clears throat> the first transaction that is given in the question was, uh, Gopinath have started business with cash. So if he is starting business with cash, that is definitely going to going to increase the amount of cash available in the business, number one, by 25,000. 5, and at the same time, this will also increase the amount of capital in the business by 25,000, right? So when you will find out, you prepare the equation, it will be 25,000 on the asset side and 25,000 on the liability. First transaction is clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Then in the second transaction, it is uh, saying that uh, Gopinatha business of purchase goods from the uh, Shyam. So since the name of the supplier is written, that means we must have bought goods on credit. So when we buy goods on credit, what will happen? The first, first of all, the stock of goods will increase in the business, right? And at the same time, creditors will also increase. So stock will increase by 10,000 and creditor will also increase by 10,000. And then we will prepare a new equation. The equation will be 25,000 plus 10,000 and on the liability plus capital side as well, 10,000 plus 25,000. Moving on to the third equation. In the third equation, it was uh, said, uh, it, it was given in the question that sold goods to Sohan. So again, the like when we buy goods and the name of the seller is given, we presume that we must have bought goods on credit. Similarly, if we are selling goods and the name of the buyer is written, then we will presume that good must have been uh, sold on credit. So whenever you sold good on credit, what will happen? Whenever you sell good on credit, what will happen? It is going to reduce the amount of stock available, number one, and at the same time, it will also increase the debtor. The person to whom you sell goods on credit is known as debtor, and debtor is an asset. So when you will sell good to Sohan, since Sohan is a debtor, and debtor comes under the asset, you, so you will have to write one more component under the heading of the asset, that is, debtors all right and then the value of the data will be 
uh, see uh, for for how much we have sold goods. The goods, the value of these stocks that we have sold to Sohan was actually eighteen hundred, but we have sold goods to Sohan for rupees fifteen hundred. So basically, we have given him a discount of three hundred. Everyone is able to understand that we have given a discount of eight, eight, uh, three hundred to Sohan. The value of goods which actually cost eighteen hundred, we sold those goods to Sohan on uh, at fifteen hundred. So that means there is a loss on sale of goods. Right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. And since it is there is a loss of three hundred, and I have told you that whenever there is a loss or any expenditure made. Such expenditure reduces the amount of capital. Whenever there is revenue or profit, it it increases the amount of capital, and whenever there is loss or expenditure, it is going to reduce the amount of capital. So in this transaction as well, firstly, the stock will in the stock will decrease by eighteen hundred since you have sold goods costing eighteen hundred, but the debtor will only increase by fifteen hundred. Right. So now the question arises: What will happen to the different difference in the value? So there is a difference of rupees three hundred. We must have given this as discount to the Sohan, and discount is a kind of loss. It is a kind of expense. So what are we going to do with the expense or loss that we have incurred? We will have to reduce the amount of capital by three hundred. Is that clear, everyone? Both of you? Yes, sir. That <clears throat> Labiba, is that clear to you as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So moving on to the fourth transaction. Fourth one was uh, Gopinath was withdrawing certain amount from from the business. So when Gopinath withdrew from the business, that is first of all, it is going to reduce the amount of uh, cash available. So cash will reduce by five five thousand, and at the same time, capital of the Gopinath will also reduce by five thousand. Since he is he is withdrawing. Amount from the business, so it is going to reduce the amount of capital. So the final equation, just a minute. So the final equation will be, we will have a cash balance of twenty thousand. We will have a, a stock of eighty two hundred. Then we will have a debtor of fifteen hundred. And on the other side of the equation, we will have a creditor of ten thousand and capital. Will be at nineteen thousand seven hundred, right, everyone? So when you will prepare an equation, it will, uh, uh, it, you will get the value as twenty nine thousand seven hundred. I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. Both of you. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. All right. So, <clears throat> okay. So this is all about question number two. Now we are moving to the next question, which is question number three. And uh, the only different thing in this question is that it contain it it actually have uh, more transaction as compared to the previous two question. Otherwise, question is uh, pretty much similar to the previous one. So I'm giving you this question as your homework. All right. So we won't be able to solve any more question in the remaining time of this session. So I'm giving you question number three as the homework. Question number three will be your homework. Please take this screenshot of the question. Done. Yes. Done. Let me be done. Okay. And uh, so I'm. Go back to the question number two. You want me to show question number two as well? Yeah, I just want to take a screenshot of it. Okay. Done. Done, sir. Yes. Done. So, and also take the screenshot of this one. I'm giving you two question for your homework. Question number three and four. Okay. All right. So this is it for today's uh, class, Zainab and Labiba. We have to end our session at this point. Because we won't be, so we still have five minutes remaining in this session, but we won't be able to solve any more question based on the accounting question. So I've given you two question for your homework. I am sure that you will be able to do these question. We'll be doing more question based on the accounting question in the next session. 
or Rachel okay, till then. Uh, this is Thank it for you, today's sir. class. You can now leave the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye. Allah.